Hello again, and welcome to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to be talking about process capacity. If you recall from Little's Law, there were three main components of process. One was inventory, one was throughput rate, and the third one was flow time. When we deal with process capacity, it has a direct relationship on the throughput rate. So what is process capacity? Well, process capacity tells us how many flow units the process can produce in a given period of time. So it's what it is capable of doing. That's the big key to process capacity. Well, how do we figure that out? Well, in some cases, we want to take a look at something called tact time. It's a funny sounding word, tact time. It's actually a German term, but it is actually the inverse of the flow rate. It's also how long it takes for one unit to come out of the process. By that, I mean not how long a unit takes to go through the entire process, but from the end of the process, and you're looking at things coming off a production line, how long it takes from one unit to the next unit to come out of the process. It's also considered to be the average activity time of the longest activity station. We'll take these uh, step by step. Let's start with the inverse of the flow rate. If we're given a flow rate that says we have 10 units per hour going through a process, then the tact time is the inverse of that, one hour per 10 units. If we convert that to minutes, it turns out that a flow rate of 10 per hour is a tact time of six minutes. A unit comes out of the process every six minutes. Now, when I also said that the tack time is the longest time of an activity, think a process that has three different activities to it. It requires activity A, and activity A takes 20 minutes per unit. Activity B takes 30 minutes, and activity C takes 15 per unit. Now, the shortest time is 15, but remember, activity B still has to be done. And let's say they're all being done at the same time. Which one is the longest? Well, that's activity B. And activity B at 30 minutes per unit is our longest time. So that would be our tact time. A good use of tact time is to try and figure out what the flow rate has to be based on our customer demand. The tack time to meet customer demand says, how much time do we have available to us in our resources for the process? And we have to take a look at what the demand rate is. And that will give us the tact time. Let's take a look at a short example. For example, we have a bicycle manufacturer that is 100 units per week. The demand is 100 bicycles per week. The bicycle manufacturer works one shift a day, eight hours in a shift, five days per week. So we can figure out how much time is available in the process, as well as the demand that's already given, 100 per week. So let's figure out that tack time. We calculate the available time. We have one shift a day times eight hours per shift times five days per week which equals 40 hours per week. Now notice that I've put all of the units down. The reason I do that is to make sure that I am putting the numbers in the correct places. We have one shift in the numerator and a shift in the denominator. We have days in the numerator and days in the denominator. And that says our available time is 40 hours in a week. Our demand is 100 in a week. So in those 40 hours in a week, we have to get 100 units done. So our tack time is 40 divided by 100, which is 0.4 hours. So a bicycle must come off that manufacturing facility that process every 0.4 hours, which is 24 minutes. So our tack time is 24 minutes. And our throughput rate is the inverse of that tack time that says, we have to get two and a half bicycles through the process every hour. So by using the customer demand and our available time, 
we have an idea of what our throughput rate has to be in order to meet our demand rate. So this is what we talk about with process capacity. The next thing we're going to be looking at is effective capacity. Sometimes the process doesn't meet the demand and we need to figure out how that's happening, what's causing it. And that's what we'll be starting to do with our next session. I'll see you then.